Hi, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek, and in today's video, we're going to talk about colour and cinema. Yes, a very difficult subject, mainly because it's an expensive thing to do. Now, I'm going to go over a bit about how it works, um, what's going wrong, and some cheap ways to get around it. So, let's have a quick look um, and talk about colour and cinema. Now, typically, uh, when you install or when you install a cinema projector. Uh, you're giving the options to um, to cor color correct that cinema. Now, in cinema, the actual tools are quite limited, and if I if you talk to any decent uh, color grader, they can be quite uh, negative about the uh, limitations in the actual ability to color correct a screen. Uh, typically, in the cinema, you're really only given the option to in, in all the digital cinema projectors is to read the uh, red, green, blue, and white um, points on the CIE uh, color cube. So we'll just have a quick look here. It's actually on the screen here now. Behind me um, is some software that I use to actually um, correct and color grade uh, the screen here at, at the finishing room, which we use to help indies uh, do their final um, color for uh, a release, for example. So, and if you're interested, finishroom.com.au, if you're a small indie, you want to get to uh, do your final finishing and just make sure everything is correct for a, pr a projected screen, this sort of emotional impact. It's very different than watching a, a color typical screen, uh, a mesh of screen to watching a projective screen. It's extremely uh, beneficial to actually grade on a proper DCI projector P3. So I highly, uh, highly advise you try it. In, if you're in Melbourne, Australia, a very cost-effective room here to hire out and do that for you. But what we have to do here is um, we've got the um, CIE chart here. And at the moment, this is a product called uh, Lightspace. And at the moment, you can actually set it to you know whatever type of um, color space you want to target. And you see I've changed it there. And you'll see that the primaries have changed to the limitations of Rec 709. And if we jump back up to P3, as you can see, it's far bigger. It's a far bigger color volume. I like to call it actually color space. I prefer to call it color volume because it is a, a more. There's more colors capable uh, in when you go into these higher color volumes. Now, in cinema, pretty much the only way to do that is you're given, uh, for example, behind me, this screen behind me there. That's uh, coming from a, an NC 1100L um, DCI NEC projector. And I log into the NEC projector configuration tool that uh, an install installer would have access to. And you go to the setup and the color settings page. And what you pretty much do is you come here, and this is the same on Barco and Christie as well. It's just a different application, it's, but it takes exactly the same input. And you get the option of set putting up green, green uh, red, green, blue, and white patches on the screen. Right now, this is going through the projector ungraded. It's basically the reddest it can get, the greenest, and the bluest it can get. And based on that, for example, if I pick green here, and I've got uh, a very cost-effective probe here. It's called an i1 Display Pro OEM version. From you have to purchase it direct from uh, from the Lightspace or um, company to work with their software. So if you want to do this, it's very cost-effective. It's about under seven hundred dollars US and you've got a, a reasonably good color tool. But we'll talk about that more later in the video to get an estimation of w how accurate, how, how much quality you want to get a, uh, up there in colors on the screen. So you can see right now that uh, it's running. And you can see here, because I've turned the screen green, and I've told it that its target is green, you'll see that the, the DCI target and the actual measured target, they're a, they're a little bit out. It's actually got a little bit more greener than is uh, actually required. And that's good because what we really were doing these these projectors are designed to aim for P3. So typically they go a little bit or more than P3. And what we're doing here is then we measure each of the red, green, and blue. Um, for example, I can tell it to do blue now, and I can tell here I want it actually. This is the free software; it only let, lets you really do certain things. But one of them is to measure that, and I tell it to do blue, and I say measure starts measuring and there it is there it's way down there next to the blue and that's where it should be so it gives you these coordinates so up here you've got these coordinates that are coming out based on what the actual um, CIE XY coordinates are for those particular co particular colors coming out of the projector ungraded 
So that then gives you the option, that that's what you take, you get those values, XY values, and then you plug them into here, into the XY here. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is that um, pretty much you're building a very simple matrix based on the fact that um, what the projector can do and what the projector needs to do. The projector needs to aim for P3. Um, you get the offsets, you put them in there, and it then calculates what it needs to to actually get dead onto P3. And then based on that matrix, matrix, when you select a different color space, it will put a matrix in front of it to get it to look right for that, you know, in for that color space. So although the DCI projectors is sort of in the P3 XYZ color, you know, XYZ color space, if you're doing a, a 709, etc., it needs another matrix to map that out to map it to the right. Um, you know, profile for that display. So that's what's happening here. It's a, it's a bit complex. It's a lot of maths involved. Um, but that's the colour grading um, process for digital cinema. It's not hard. It's, it's quite easy and it's reasonably quick. Um, it's not the best because, you know, if you talk to any real colour specialist, uh, you know, in the colour grading game, that you, they prefer you do a proper uh, profile of the screen. A profile basically this software when you've got the full version, this is the free version. So to do this I'm just using the free version of the software and buying a, 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 a one of their inexpensive probes. Uh, but what you can do here um, with this software if you've got the full version is you can actually profile the screen where it basically automatically changes the colour of the screen at lots of different, you can actually set how many degrees or how many steps you want. It then calculates the colour at all those steps of different brightnesses for primaries or, or other other colours that you would possibly use. And the more you use, the more accurate the measurement is. So you can actually dial that up as much or dial it up and down as much as you want. But it then measures it much more accurately. We're basically taking the brightest, you know, th three or four, four points, the red, green and blue and white. Uh, when you do a profile, you do those, you might do cyans and other colours as well, but you just don't do the colours, you do it at each different, you know, like 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and you can even go down to, you know, 5% even more. So it could take a long time depending on how fast your probe is. Uh, and that's what you do in a colour grading suite, right? So I just I want you to understand how this works. So in digital cinema, it's actually quite simple, and I'm actually surprised. I think it actually works quite well, even though it's a very simplistic way of gr grading the screen. It works quite reliably because the DLPs, I think, are quite linear in nature, so it's very, it, it's you know, it's quite reliably giving you the right colours. But the problem with this is that um, a good colour grading tool is at least ten thousand plus dollars. So you don't see a lot of um, center installers carrying around a, a color grading tool that, that that expensive and you don't see them spending you know the time it takes to do those um, color accuracies but the thing is now we're getting long long in the tooth for um, s these projectors some of them may be starting to drift or especially when you do install them you've got to take into account the the, the bio box glass that's coming through and other aspects that can change the color and that's why every time you do install you should actually do the minimum calibration of the of the projector at the very least but realistically you probably should do it once a year as well but because of the cost of the pro tools and the trained personnel etc a lot of people aren't doing that because you know they do look good anyway but it, we're getting to the stage where you know color does matter and if you can do this cost effectively then why not if you see, if you think the colours look different, don't look right, they probably aren't. Because if you can notice it yourself and you haven't got trained eyes like someone like me, who actually does look at this and I've seen the difference, then if you can think it's wrong, it, it usually is very wrong. So where can you get back to a good, you know, a good target without having to buy a 10,000 plus device or renting it off someone? Uh, well, I really suggest... Um, just doing what I did. If you're an engineer, you'd have the software anyway. You'd have the tools to, to change the color. You have a laptop and the and the tool to configure the projector. All we're talking about is getting a free tool from Lightspace and buying an uh, inexpensive probe. Now, this probe. What's the accuracy of this probe? This is a colorimeter. It's not a spectrometer. So a spectro as a compared to a colorimeter. Now, what's the difference? So this, let's get into a little bit of um, color science and how it's all measured. Um, a uh, uh, colorimeter basically has th 
three filters, red, green and blue in there and it, it passes those filters in front of uh, the, the measuring device. It's very quick. The reason why people use them is because they're very quick. The Spectro is far more accurate, but it's far slower to use. But they're also extremely expensive. You're talking ten to $20,000 depending on the quality of the device you want to get. Um, while this simple I want Display Pro OEM must be OEM to work with the software, so keep an eye on that, it's only about $700 or less. And it does a pretty good job. And it's actually quite common that a lot of people will get a Spectro and a, and a colorimeter and use them together because they want to do, uh, basically they use the Spectro to get a base reading, then they match the colorimeter to it, and then they use the colorimeter to do all the patches at all the different levels because it's like 10 times faster or five to 10 times faster than the Spectro. So you don't want to be there you know, for 12 hours while it analyzes your screen, it's just, not realistic. So, there's a you know when you get into the color science of people who actually do this on a common basis and the costs involved and why it costs us much. Well, there are reasons if you actually want to aim for that sort of accuracy of color, like if you're in a post facility where they do actually take that much care. So, this is a quick lesson on um, color in cinema and when you know how you, you can do it cost effectively. I think the accuracy of, of the the um, I want Display Pro out of the um, factory. Is pretty cr pretty good, and if you if you um you know I, I haven't got a spectro to, to calibrate it against because I, I can't really afford fifteen thousand dollars on one of those at the moment, but you know that's what I would do if I had one. But otherwise, it's pretty close anyway. It's amazingly accurate for the price that you pay for them. And if you're in a if you're in a in a stuck and you know the colours are starting to get bad, and you're saying what's the best way to get out of it? Well, this is a good path to take. Otherwise, hiring a professional to do it. Um, themselves. So that's a good lesson on keeping colour correct in cinema and what you can do, how it works, what you can do about it um, and you know if you want to do it yourself and keep it reasonably correct yourself there's a good path for there too. So thank you for watching Cine Tech Geek and bye for now.